Telephone recordings here are from 1975 through 1977. This narration is being done in 2022. For the 1976 part of this program, I'll be speaking in the present tense to give the listener the experience of exploring a tie line network set up by the Bell System for a New York based insurance company 46 years ago. It was the New York Telephone Company, not the insurance company, that was responsible for leaving the door open that made this exploration possible. In 1975, we began to see a new type of PBX appearing in the networks of Bell System companies. The first one of these I became aware of was in Long Island's 560 exchange, which up until that point had had two Centrexes. The threes through the sixes went to Hofstra University, And the twos, you have reached a non-working number at the Hempstead Bank. But now, something new appeared in the 560-7s. The ringtone on this PBX was something I had never heard before locally. That was the first time I ever heard a Japanese ringtone over a local connection. It did have an intercept line. Here's a call to intercept from the west side of Manhattan going over N1 carrier to Hempstead. Recording would just cut off like that after approximately one and a quarter plays. So we tried checking it for talkability, but the second line got this. So the intercept line didn't have any party line potential. I asked Bill Acker what this was and he apparently found out that it was a Nippon Electric crossbar PBX. Now, I didn't think much more about this until later that year on a trip to Staten Island, where Dave and I discovered that 660, in at least three of the four Staten Island offices, had been changed in a particular way. Prior to 1975, 660s in Staten Island went directly to the ringback circuit. But now, 660 did this. Now this doesn't exactly sound like a ringback dial tone, and it isn't. It's coming from a Nippon PBX. To get ringback, you have to dial 6. There, now this new dial tone probably is the ringback dial tone, and also it's probably talkable. I'm going to dial 6, hang up and ring. Okay, I picked up before it actually rang, but it was about to. Now Dave will call in on the other line and get a dial tone, and he'll dial 6, hang up, and ring. Hello. Hello. Hi. Very talkable. In fact, this one sounds almost identical to the newer side of the 660 in Lindbrook, my home office. Why did 660 in Staten Island now have a nip on PBX? It was so that they could put other services on that same 660 code. Like Manhattan, but fewer options. They didn't have any other test lines, but they did have a test board. 
I haven't found a tape of this, but I'm pretty sure I recall dialing 660 somewhere, getting the wind-up dial tone, <laughs> dialing a 1 and hearing this, <laughs> then quickly hanging up because I didn't want to get 290'd, if you know that expression. I do have a tape of dialing a 1 and a 5 on the 660 in South Staten Island, and instead of a ring, well, you'll hear. That clip was from 1975, when music on hold was still pretty uncommon. In 1980, Ben reported that the Nippon PBXs were still on some 660s. There's still some real 660s around, huh? Well, I think the real Japanese ones, anyway. So that's pretty much the only thing we ever had to do with these PBXs until one of them turned up in the tie-line network of that insurance company. In this program, I'll be using that Nippon PBX as the ingress to their network. We're going to the fall of 1976 now, where I'm going to dial 578-4451. Alrighty, let's reset the trunk, see how long the dial tone goes on. It was between 15 and a half and 16 seconds. Here's a ringing extension that begins with two. Uh, now wait a minute, I don't think that's supposed to ring right away. There are extensions beginning with two, I'm sure. Still don't believe it. Let's try it again. There. Now, after two more digits, it ought to ring. You know, there's something about this tie line or this PBX that seems to be screwing up the dial pulses. Okay, now, we haven't tried codes beginning with 7. Let's dial a 7. Hello? Anyone using... Hello? 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 Excuse it, I'm just checking your line. How about that? That's probably the only tape I have of getting busy line verified on panel. Someone was trying to reach my mom. It was busy, so she had the operator check it. Okay, two plus two digits is still working right, so maybe seven really was supposed to ring immediately. Let's try nine. No, 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 no. It didn't even click before it rang. Okay, that makes more sense. Nine apparently doesn't work. Some PDXs will let you get the outside line, but not here. 
Let's dial 8, which we know does work. Okay, here we are at the home office. I'm going to call 452, which goes to that crossbar PBX we were using near the beginning of this series. I'll hold on and let its dial tone time out to the reorder, which comes back to the dial tone. Then I'll dial 81 to come back to the home office. Operator, hello? Well, cool. Another recorded instance of being busy line verified on panel. Glad that happened. I took the hint and hung up this time so my mom's caller could get through. Just a historical note, busy line verification in the mid-1970s in New York City was handled by the rate and route operator, 141. Prior to this time, it had been office code plus 9901 to reach whatever local cord board handled the line you wanted verified. But they had to do something after they took all the cord boards out in the earlier 70s, so verification went to 141. So now presumably my mom has gotten her phone call, so let's call back and make a stack. On this call, we have a very noisy district. There it is, and it's going to do it some more. Let's listen for a few seconds. Heh, <laughs> that's really cool. It was there from the dial tone on this particular call, so it's going to keep doing it until we completely hang up. But in the meantime, Let's dial 8 for the main office. Four five two for the crossbar PBX. That was eight one to come back to the home office. Now 453. That's the Centrex, now 111. That's the home office, now 440 plus 9 for an outside line and my number. The stack is already long enough to make it so you can't hear what's at the end. But this in the middle, you can hear. That was the 453 Centrex to home office register sender dropping out. Now my phone is ringing, although you'd never know it by listening to this. Here's the other line. Okay, I've tripped the ring. 
and we're listening through capacitors. I didn't want to go off hook because this would have made a long distance call in the wrong place. Now I'm going to send a beep of 2600 from the calling line, and as you'll hear... Is that it? Yep, that's all we're going to hear. Not because the call isn't longer than that, but because that register sender from the 453 Centrex back to the home office was allowed to time out before the call went through. You heard it back there. So when I beep 2600 now, it only goes down the first part of the call and then it's stopped because when the register sender's gone, no more pulses will go in the forward direction. I should have sat there dialing ones while the call was going through. As it is, there's not much more I can do with this call. If I go off hook on my phone line, all that'll do is send supervision back to Dayton, Ohio, where the line that called me is on the 440 PBX. That's not going to make an interesting sound. So there's only one thing left to do. Hang up. Okay. For this next one, I'll dial out on my line, which pretty much sounds the same. I think the district, which is the first selector in panel, whooshes less on my line than the ones we get on my mother's line. But other than that, it's the same. Okay, here's 578-4451. Okay, I reset the 445 tie line and dialed an 8. We are now listening to the home office dial tone. And this time I want to put two of those Centrax tie lines with their register senders in the connection. So I'm going to dial 453 for the Centrax, then 111 back to the home office. Then I'll do that again, 453 and then 111. Then I'll call 440. By that point, you'll notice that after I dial that code 440, you can hear one register sender repeating the zero down in the background, followed by the sound of another, even lower. This adds an interesting delay because rather than just repeating pulse by pulse, the register sender stores and sends digit by digit. 440 is that crossbar PBX that turned out to be in the Dayton area. On that, I'll dial 9 and my mother's number. Here comes that double digit delay I was talking about. dialing all those ones because I want to keep the register senders going so that we can hear the dialing come all the way down the line as we listen from the called end. The trick is going to be to get my mother's line answered and connected to the recorder through capacitors, all the while not pausing too long between dialing digits. Okay, at least I can pause that long. Still good. Okay, I'm going to try to set up the... Okay, recorder's on the... 
And... Oh no, not again. I apparently paused too long when I was trying to get the recorder on my incoming line and then beep from the outgoing line and... Well, those register senders are gone now. See, that's all that happens when I flash. So I wanted to hear an on-hook signal going from the start of the call all the way down to the end. But we can still hear it, albeit only once, by my hanging up the calling line. Well, that was actually kind of satisfying to hear fall off. Let me play that again. Alright, that's great, but I still want the complete stacking experience, which includes being able to ring forward from the front end of the call, and I want to do it on a call that starts with, you know, that. So, um, let's do it again, this time not put any Centrex links in. That way I'll have all the time I need to get the recorder switched around. Hmm, dial date. Sounded like it was going to give me the home office dial tone, but it hasn't. Try it again. Hello, home office. That's better. Okay, let's do 452 for the crossbar. And since I didn't come in through that Centrex tie line, I can let it go around and around like this as much as I want. That was 8-1 for the home office, followed by 445. Here we are on the home office again. And now 452 for the crossbar again. Okay, 8-1 for the home office again. Still audible. All right, now 440 is that other crossbar PBX. I'm going to call 44091 and my number. Or my mother's number, I mean. At this point, you can't hear anything from the far end of this call. But somewhere in here, I trip the ring on the other line. And now let's go to the other line, listening through capacitors.
Okay, now this stack has so much loss that when I dial a 1, you won't even hear where it's starting. See that? It just sort of appears out of the darkness. Here's a zero. Some other digits. These sounds are being made by my beeping various digits in 2600 hertz from my calling line. That causes the New York to nip on tie line to respond. The pulses are then sent completely down the line all the way to Dayton, Ohio, where a crossbar 5 line is calling me. And that's as far as the pulses get, because crossbar 5 lines don't convey flashes onto the network, so the call to me doesn't get flashed with these digits. The funny thing about this is you can tell it's a crossbar 5 line calling me by the relay sound that is found usually in crossbar 5. Sometimes when you make an outgoing call on crossbar 5 and you flash your hook, there's a relay that kind of goes and these digits, here's a 1 for example, every pulse ends up making that relay ring on the line that's calling me. Let me stop the tape and isolate that sound for you. Yeah, that's the sound, very crossbar 5. I'm going to turn the tape back on. I start to dial a lot of digits this time. Okay, now, before I hang up, I'm going to flash my hook on the calling line. That makes a loud tick, but it sure won't be loud. I'm going to turn up the volume. You might be able to hear it with headphones. Here goes. Oh, man, don't feel bad if you couldn't hear that. It was just barely audible. So much so that you're not even sure you really heard it. Okay, now I'm going to hang up the calling line, and the sound of the disconnect will just sort of emerge out of the darkness, so to speak. Ah, nice. Well, there's a lot of other... Oh, I'm sorry, that sound means we're out of time! No, seriously, this is the last call that began with that I wanted to put in this series. But there's more tie lines, and we'll use the 445 in the middle of stacks in some future programs. So we'll still hear this, just not right up close. You know, it's funny the way people parse things uniquely, because to me, it's a goofy sound, just silly. But I have at least one listener for whom this sound is eerie, creepy, scary. But we can agree this analog stuff, with its sounds being made by real hardware, is just marvelous, fascinating, amazing. Now it turns out that after I recorded at least two hours of this, I realized that I had discovered an easier way to explore the network. It was right under my nose and I didn't think of it at first, but Probably in the next program, I will show you an easier way to explore the network. It'll still start with dialing 5784 something, but there's a thing I haven't thought of that I could have been doing from the moment I discovered that Centrex on 453, and I'll probably cover that next.